it may be summer, but we're thinking about Christmas. And we're lucky enough today to have the H&K P7. And it ain't really Christmas time until you see Hans Gruber fall off of Nakatomi Plaza. And all I have to say about that is, yippee-ki-yay, mother Thanks for joining us on Shoot of the Series. I'm Ed Thorell, and we'd like to thank you all for joining us. Today we've got the H&K P7 M13, and we want to show, for starters, we're safe and clear. Okay. This right here is the Unicorn. Um, this is one of the very earliest striker fired, if not the first, and this came about in the late 1970s when the German Federal Police were looking to replace uh, the Walter PPs in 32 with something a little more stout in 9 millimeter. So uh, uh, they sent out a uh, uh, request and H&K provided this. So they were looking for a pistol that would be safe to carry with a round in the chamber but also be ambidextrous. And with this they got a whole lot of features. So it's a full size 9 millimeter and um, it's, it's very unique in that what most people really notice is the fact that it's got this little grip lever. And the grip lever actually performs three different functions. And the first thing function is it cocks it. And you'll be able to notice there's an indicator that the striker is back. And once you have the lever completely engaged, and it takes about a little over 15 pounds to get it engaged, it's about two pounds to keep it there. So once it's engaged, it'll fire. And as long as you keep the lever depressed, it'll keep firing, just like any other semi-automatic pistol. It's got some great features. Um, and I'll just point out some of the ones that are, you know, the easiest to see. It comes with, you know, three dot sights. Um, Europeans adopted it and it uh, took about 10 years before the American market picked up on it also, but that's a great feature. Um, you're also going to notice that it comes with ambidextrous magazine release. And that means that if you put your finger here and here and push down, the magazine will release either one-handed or either way, good for righties or lefties. The other control that it has is right back here, which is the takedown button. Um, I'm not going to take it down, but there's plenty of videos that will show you how. But what you're seeing right here is an actual minimalist pistol that has the fewest amount of controls. Um, this one, though, it takes a little while when it comes to training because you've got to get used to how the, uh, the, the, the caulking mechanism works. So like we said before, the, the caulking mechanism performs three different functions. Once again, by caulking it, it's going to have the striker come back out. But what the caulking mechanism also does is it acts as a safety, meaning if it is not engaged, this will not fire. Now, um, the other uh, control that's very hard to see is this right here above the magazine release. And what that is, is a um, the hold back for the slide. And what you're gonna do is, is you're gonna push this in with your finger as you pull the slide back and it'll lock into place. It's a little bit awkward. It takes a little bit of time and practice to use it. Um, it's actually easier for me to use my thumb, but it's easier for me to demonstrate it so you can see it using my finger. Okay, so the caulking mechanism does three things, right? We talked about it being a safety. We also talked about it caulking the hammer, but also it releases the slide. So it is very quick when it comes to getting these things loaded and getting them on target. Um, some of the other features that it comes with is it comes with a cold forged barrel and it also has what's called polygonal rifling. Now, Glock has really made a lot out of polygonal rifling, but it was H&K that actually got there first. And in the late 70s and the early 80s, 
H and Ks were 20 years ahead of the pack when it came to features and they really don't get enough credit. They're expensive to build, but they were also an innovator. So um, one of the other things I wanna show you, and even though I've got a, a loaded magazine, I'm not gonna rack it. One of the things that you need to understand is, is that in order to make the gun as uh, dependable as possible, you want the magazine to go straight up and down in the gun as much as possible. And with most semi-autos, they go in at an angle which means when it comes to feeding, you know, they're making a compromise. One of the things that you get with the H&K P7 though, is that you'll notice when I put this in, look how it goes straight up and down in the grip. There's enough room in the grip that it's actually chambering back here. And because it's straight up and down, you're gonna get very efficient feeds, meaning it's gonna be almost impossible for this thing to have a misfeed. And um, because of it, it's, it's just a very innovative gun. Um, it also comes with a lanyard ring, very common with uh, police departments in Europe at the time to have these worn on a lanyard that might be attached you know, behind your holster so that if you drop the gun, it was on a leash. It couldn't get too far away from you. Um, it, it also has a few little quirks to it. And it's because uh, sometimes in, you know, in the design phase, you come up with unanticipated consequences. And one of the things that it will do is, is if you have the finger or have the trigger depressed all the way and actually squeeze cock it, this will, the squeeze cocker actually acts as a trigger if the trigger is depressed. Let me do that from this side so that you can see it a little bit better. Hang on a second here. Trigger's depressed. So you have to be careful with that. That's one of those uh, um, design features that was unanticipated. Um, some people have uh, considered that might be a safety issue, but you know, ideally this is your safety and it's up to the shooter to be aware of how the gun works. Um, it's a Great little pistol. This is the unicorn right here. Um, most people recognize it from Die Hard, but you don't see these on the shelf. These stopped coming to America in about 2000, which means these are hard to find. The, the P7 was the original eight shooter. This is the P7 M13, which is a 13 shooter. And this is actually in 1981 went to the US Army trials to replace the 1911, and this went up against the 1911 as well as the uh, uh, Beretta. However, the Beretta um, was actually what was uh, adopted, and it's probably because it's a little bit less complicated and it's a lot less expensive. Anyway, I'm really excited about putting some rounds through it, and that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna make some music with the H&K P7 M13. So this is the H&K P7M13, and it comes with a very distinctive magazine. You're not gonna see a magazine shaped like that anywhere else. Um, it's pretty bizarre looking, and some people that know what this looks like can spot them right away. It's also worth noting it's got a window on the side so that you can check your round count if you need to. Um, I'm pretty excited about this. So if I don't perform really well with it, it's because I'm excited to use something that's always been on my bucket list, but I'm still gonna try to do as best I possibly can. All right, we're live. Okay, gripping the squeeze cocker to hold it in. Wow, it shoots center, very little felt recoil. Ease it out to the reset. Okay, that's a smooth shooter right there. Yeah, there's nothing, uh, nothing really to complain about. I mean, it feels good in the hands. I'd like a little bit more grip on the uh, grip texture, but you know, that's just me. That's me not trying very hard. This is super, super accurate. And you may not find these on the shelf, and if you want one, you're gonna have to put in the work to find them. 
and these are going to be hard to find. And if this is something you want to add to your collection, you're going to have to work really, really hard to find it. And keep in mind also that with that rarity, you're going to pay top dollar for them also. This is not going to be something you're ever going to get a great deal on. Wow, that is a smooth shooter. Um, I can't say enough good things about it. You know, one of the things I noticed right off is that it's got a very um, low bore um, compared to other pistols. And because the bore sits lower on the pistol, it's gonna have less leverage against you and less muzzle rise. So it's gonna come straight up your arm. Um, the trigger pull is absolutely amazing. Something that you wouldn't expect from a striker fired but when you're actuating the lever, you're actually prepping the trigger. So the trigger doesn't have to do all the work. The lever's actually doing most of the work to get the trigger prepped. Um, I find that just about all of the different design features are really, really cool. The only thing that I really don't care for is this tiny little um, control for locking the slide back. And it would either take a lot more training to get comfortable with that, but it's in an awkward place. Um, if it had some texture to it, or if it had some sort of a little nub on it that you could get a little bit more of a grip on it, that would be great. Um, some of this comes just from my preferences of liking oversized controls. And this is so understated that somebody might not even realize that that's a control because it doesn't look like anything other than just a surface on the pistol. Otherwise, um, I can't say enough good things about this. And it's been a real privilege and a real honor to be able to shoot something like this that is incredibly valuable, hard to replace. This, this isn't just a unicorn. This is Bigfoot riding a unicorn with a winning, winning lotto ticket. And um, today I won the lotto because I got to shoot it. Anyway, it's, it's been a fun day, you know, scratching this off my bucket list and glad that you were here to share it with me. Anyway, on behalf of the cast and crew of Shooter the Series, we thank you for joining us. Hit the like, the share, and subscribe button so that you won't miss any more of our episodes. And y'all take care of yourselves out there. yippee ki mother. <laughs>